Well, greetings. It's the weekend and this is your update. And this week it's all about teamwork. And you'll see what I'm talking about in your second here. I always try to find a theme of what's going on during the week, but I think that best describes it. And uh, it's the team that you'd expect and sometimes it's the team that you wouldn't. So uh, we'll start off over here on the Podcasting Store YouTube channel. We shared a short from uh, Daniel Battle. He does the uh, DaVinci Resolve for Noobs stuff. Great, great content. And this week he's talking about uh, how to create a freeze frame effect. Now I've done this in the past by cutting it, changing the time, or exporting a uh, still, extending that, yada, yada. There's a much, much easier way of doing that in DaVinci Resolve, and he's going to show it to you right here. DaVinci Resolve for noobs. Another way to create a freeze frame in DaVinci Resolve is get your footage to play to where you want it to stop, pause your footage so that your playhead is right over that spot, select that footage, and in the upper right, click on the video tab of the inspector and scroll down to speed change. Right where it says direction, click on the third snowflake looking icon, and that will freeze frame everything after that point for that clip. You can also grab and drag that out and stretch that freeze frame to be as long as you want it to be. Super simple, he's got great tips there. If you don't know his channel, uh, you're missing out. Take a look at it. Then over on the Boomer YouTube channel, uh, we had another in our series on the Shires Day. And this time we're talking about balusters, and that's the, the valve cluster. That's uh, that section there and what it's made out of and all that stuff. And uh, Matt Nishida is going to explain that to you, because that's a concept that I didn't really know until I started really getting into this side of the business, despite being a trumpet player. Check it out, and let's uh, learn about balusters. Baluster is this section of the horn here. You can mess with the density of the metal, create different sounds or even feel of the horn. Uh, and then you have one piece or two piece. Student trumpets tend to be one piece balusters or one piece valve. So that means that this and this are made out of one piece of brass. Uh, most professional level horns are made out of two piece um, valve clusters and the balusters are either nickel or brass. Generally on a classical trumpet, you'll have nickel. Um, it just creates a little bit more density and color to sound. The brass kind is kind of lighter um, than the nickel would be, so you'll see that more on like commercial horns. But this would be a brass baluster. So bringing that back to the teamwork thing, it's, think about the detail that goes into every last choice that's made on these trumpets and how it's going to help customize the sound to be exactly what you want it to be. Just stuff that I hadn't considered until I really started diving into this. Then over on the Podcasting Store YouTube channel, I did another one of my uh, five things. And this time it's five pieces of gear that you could bring with you to create quality content on the go. And spoiler alert, I'm using every last one of them. That's how I came up with this list. Uh, it's one of my wraparound uh, uh, shorts. So check it out and you'll see the stuff that you can deploy to create great stuff even when you're not in your studio. Five things you can bring with you to create quality content on the go. A phone holder. You're going to want to go hands-free for this operation. In-ear studio monitors. Something that can isolate the sound so you can hear clips if you're doing a live stream or hear your audio if you're doing some editing. A stream deck. This is a massively useful item so that you can switch scenes and do a live stream or a live recording without the need of a crew. A wireless system. Useful in a studio setting, especially if it's got some high quality audio, but it's really useful if you need to get some distance from your camera. A portable green screen. Just because you're not in your studio doesn't mean your audience needs to know that. A portable green screen is going to allow you to control what they see and how you present your video content. And this is just one of the... I will absolutely grant that the green screen might be a bit of a stretch. Uh, it doesn't fit in your bag, but this time we drove it fit in the car nicely. And honestly, I've flown with it before too. But all the rest of that stuff is uber, uber portable. Uh, if, if you can't fit that in your bag, you're carrying around too much stuff. And then over on the podcasting store uh, medium page this week, uh, I was writing about the the hidden uh, team that makes a hall of famer. And uh, we got to visit the Louisville Slugger Museum and factory. And it's super, super cool. If you're in Kentucky, I highly recommend it, taking a look at, it, especially if you're a baseball fan. And we got to hold the bats of some really famous people. And one of those was Todd Helton and Tim got to hold his bat and I got his picture with it. Well, Todd Helton's about to be inducted to the Hall of Fame, but as we learned as we're uh, touring the factory, you just have countless people that go into the making of that bat and selecting the wood, crafting it, so on and so forth. Just no one can do it alone. That's what I mean about being part of a team and about you know everyone shares in the success of someone that reaches that kind of pinnacle of their career. So check out that essay if you haven't seen it yet. It's a pretty good read. So that is your weekend update. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Comment below, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch up with you next time.
If you enjoyed the weekend update, do me a favor and follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channels, or visit our websites. This is Drew with Boomer Music Company and thepodcastingstore.com. Thanks for listening.